want to start recording? There we go. All right. I am uh, calling to order the meeting of Thursday, May 6, 2021 for the Deerfield Ad Hoc Senior Housing Committee. And Anna Lee will tell you how you can join us. All right. So this meeting is held remotely at the Deerfield Town Hall located at Conway Street. All are welcome, but meetings normally held there are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and for required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020. We should have like celebrated on March 11th, on yeah. 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Um, if people wish to have access to the Zoom link, they can access through the town website at deerfieldma.us. And there are other instructions on that agenda for being part of the meeting. There you go. Thank you. However, if you're not in this meeting, you wouldn't know this anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I don't know, an exercise in tranquility, but isn't so much of governance. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so did everybody, I mean, the first item on the agenda is to review the minutes from the last meeting, which comprised Anna Lee and yours truly, um, because Deborah had an emergency call out and Carolyn was in a meeting. And so we uh, we reviewed the minutes and then we adjourned. So did everybody get a chance to look at the extensive minutes of about five lines from the last meeting? <laughs> I'm going to abstain lately. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. All right. I guess only Anna Lee and I can vote to accept them. Anna Lee, I move that we have, <laughs> hey, we have a, actually two out of, well, no, anyway. Yeah. Two out of four quorum. <laughs> well, yes, I move. All right. Uh, second. And so uh, all those in favor of the, accepting the minutes, raise your hand. Say your name. Lily Dwight, I. Emily Wolf, I. Excellent. Carolyn Ness, abstain. And I, I uh, whatever. Deborah? Deborah. Mary Jane White. I'm just kidding. Yes. I. Did I have to say certain words? You can abstain. Yeah. Um, so it's it's two it's two zero two, or two 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 zero. I guess it's not that we're against it; we're just abstaining. Abstaining. Um, it's not me calling you, Lily. No, no, it's just <laughs> scam. And usually, what I'll do is I will actually answer and speak um, gibberish <laughs> at them, or. But, the one last week I said, I just waited for them to come on. I said, well, hello, and what's your scam? <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> it was very fun. Um, you got um, have fun. Really, yes. Um, we had minutes from the previous um, meeting. Oh, which we could not approve because. Right. Do you guys, we, did you guys get a chance to look at them? It was. Uh, I did review them. I made a couple of uh, minor corrections on um, some of the ownership stuff. It was like unknown or town of Deerfield. Um, but uh, did either of you get to look at the link? I think Deborah, you missed. Did you miss that meeting, or were you there for that one? I did. Yep, because I have to do that lovely gig at Gianni's. Right. But. Since we're closed for COVID, then here I am. All right. Well, we're glad you're here, but we're not glad why you're here. Yeah. Carol, right. Did you get a chance to look at the uh, minutes? I, I didn't. I'm for, I didn't think of it, Lily. I'm trust sorry. Her. We, we trust her. We trust her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> but you should, do you want to abstain then? And we'll just vote to accept them and you too. Sure. Again? Sure. Sure. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't even think to look at them, truthfully. Well, yeah, they're two weeks ago. All right. So the, what was the date of those? I think it was the 22nd, or at least that's what I, I suspected think I from the 29th. I don't know if it was or not. Yes. All right. I, I move that we accept the minutes as posted for the April 22nd meeting. Can I get a second? 
Uh, I second. All right. Um, all those in favor? Emily Wolf Coit, yes. Deborah? Yes. Carolyn? I abstain. Okay. Lily? I say yes. Lily Dwight says yes. Okay. So that is uh, three. Which one is the abstain? Is that the middle one? Three, one, zero? Well, you know what? I've he heard it read both ways. Okay. So I can't, I'm, I'm, I was trying to think from the last vote, what is the correct way? And I'm going to have to look it up okay. because I've heard it both ways. And now I can't remember which is the correct you know, way. It just writes three yays, one abstain. Okay. I, the trick. I know. Basically. But there is a, there is, there is a correct way to do it. Okay. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Okay. All right. So for tonight's agenda, hang on, I got to pop that one up. I have too many, too many needs. So we did the minutes. So we were talking about continuing the discovery process and any unanticipated new business and then um, assess our progress and where we want to go. So <clears throat> I, um, and I will share my screen and we will continue having fun, but I realized that there might be a more methodical approach to this and being a nerd I of course went and found one so i have downloaded two spreadsheets that i will upload to the the drive that you guys can all see one for owner unknown and one for town and um so i think that it might and we've done a, a bunch of both already. And what needs to happen is we need to transfer the information that Annalie has been capturing about the size of each of these parcels. We need to put them into these spreadsheets because the spreadsheets don't have that. They have the parcel number and they have whether it's unknown or and, and they have the address. So um, I'm thinking that... Uh, why don't I? So we should decide. I will tell you right now that there are. Uh, hang on, I gotta bring up the counts here. There are. Sorry, I'm exhausting my little device. Um, Okay, give me row numbers, you book one. Okay, there are 15 properties with an owner unknown. One, two, three, four of them are off Pine Nook, Ro Pine Nook Road, and I think those are the ones that we talked about last week, so I don't think we need to do them. And no. we've identified that there's about, one parcel is like 16 acres, and I'm not looking at Annalise's wonderful notes but that's what needs to happen yes that that, re, that that rings a bell yeah um, but it seems like there are about at least 40 acres there yes but, well we want to we we want to make sure um we, we should identify them to where the town memorial forest is because if that's 40 acres we could co combine with our memorial forest which i think is like a hundred and something acres and um we could um come up with a sequestration yeah a carbon and yeah. we could sell it on the california exchange and we could have some income yeah so that's an issue i yeah. mean i mean that would be worth pursuing that's an opportunity yes <laughs> um so that so that makes sense so okay. we, those should be pursued one way or the other yes and, and they may the, have the other ones we need to go through right um because there might be possibilities of trading or selling. Absolutely. Um, I don't think they're big enough to be worthwhile, but again, it's, it's money we could put towards a project or we can consolidate and trade or do something, you know, cause we right. have to, we have, we do know we have Brayburn, right. but we need to have access to Brayburn and it will cost money to have an access. So we need to come up with a solution that will, allow us to um, get the access. Right. Um, 
and we need to find out if we're going to do the park um you know on north main street because it's another parcel the town owns it's really downtown so if we do do the park that's fine mm -hmm. but um that's a need for the town but if we don't do the park um there certainly is subdivision of uh, the ability for a subdivision road to go in and we and that would be potential senior housing as well correct though so it is right on the railroad line so i know it's not hugely desirable but you could put up i mean town, town barrier stuff could be done yeah, yeah. i mean lily i live off the railroad too you know i live up the hill from the railroad so you know the you just get used to it yeah i mean so it's not that big a deal one of the things that we did find okay so um because i couldn't help myself i did find i'm going to start sharing my screen here we go um all right alex you let me do that thank you all right go away all right so here is a can you see it yeah Ellie? yes okay. yes i just lost the the minute so but i'm okay i think i'm okay okay this is a large parcel off of stage road um that's called it's actually says it's on birchwood drive and it's owned by the town of Deerfield. And its number is? Hang on. 138-5. Okay, here we go. Ah. Wow, I didn't know we had that. <laughs> right? I was like going, really? This is, and it goes, wraps around like Kumtuk. And this is 36 acres all by itself, you guys. Wow, Lily, you know, I have to say that this is very interesting and it's <laughs> worthwhile doing this because no one's done this. Right. It's, it is definitely fun, but that's why at the end of tonight's meeting, I do want us to stop and assess our progress and, and, and what we're doing. Um, <laughs> this is 138-5. It is owned by the town of Deerfield. 30 <sighs> acres. pretty wild, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm shocked. I didn't know about this. So we okay. sold in, in 76 for five fifty five hundred dollars Why why did we buy it? Well, that's a darn good question. Let's look at where it is again. Is this some um, a watershed? You know, that's up there by the water. Is it a watershed thing? Well, it's up the Comtech though. That's not so watery. Hang on, I gotta shrink you guys. Let's pull out a little bit. So it's not, I mean, there's a lot of distance between the the river and that. And then there's that really, there's this really skinny one. Yeah. That is, it's, that's the wrong one. It's a super skinny one. And it's actually on Pocomtuck Drive. And it's lot number 135-10. And it's one acre from 2005, Carolyn. From wow, so the other one is 2005 too. So that's kind of strange. Even gold, does that ring a bell? I mean, I know you do a lot of stuff, but how does this stuff happen and nobody, yet, what was it? Well, I mean, I was a selectman at that time, but honest to God, I don't remember anything of that. That big one, the 36 acre one, that was in 1976. Oh, that was 76. I'm yeah. sorry. And I had in my mind it was 2005. Yeah. Um, I have no idea why that we have that little 2000. I mean, that boy, well, what a useless piece of property. Well, it does well, off the end of Pocomtick Drive, but who is number 11? Might they be interested? They have five right. acres and it's, um, who owns it? Um, David and Mary Ellen Duthright, Duthright? I don't know how to say their name, but they might be interested in purchasing this one, this one little acre next to them. And then they would have much more frontage on the end of Pocomtuck. And I bet you um, somebody like Deb Schreiber might know well, anyway, but uh, 
So there are some significant properties owned by the town, for sure. And we had said that we were going to, so this is all just town of Deerfield. Let's do unknown I wonder how, if it has anything to do with Pocumptic Drive. You know, they made a cul-de-sac instead of right doing the road. And then when we, um, then the town took over the road, you know, it came to town meeting for the town to take over the road and maintenance and all that. Hmm. Maybe that was part of it. Cause it looks, I mean, it just connects. Right, it connects to the very end of that. Yeah. But this person who owns parcel number one might be interested, or I mean, that was this other one here, they, the both rights. But then this parcel one might be landlocked. Interesting. What, do we own that? Is that owned or? No, that's, oh, Mountain Way Nominee Trust. Does anybody know what that is? Um, that's Debbie Shriver, has, I think I sent up. Uh, well, no, no, maybe that, uh, no, Debbie didn't set, set she set up uh, some kind of trust and, pre and preserve the land. I'm not sure if that was it. This address is actually on River Road. Huh. But I don't look know. at how wackadoodle that parcel is. Yeah. But, so they don't necessarily need to come to access. But anyway, they might want to. It's just, just weird. Okay, so here are the ones that are just unknown. So I thought, let's make it easier for tonight. And we'll begin with just the unknowns because there are fewer of them altogether. Mm -hmm. So we explored the pine nook and all that stuff, but we did not, did we, f and the thing is, is what I said, we'll remember where we left off and yet, let's go up here. Uh, yeah. much better thank you um we did, did you look at this one no yeah we did that's not it i'm gonna close some of these great number of windows that i have open okay and then i'm gonna keep like that so Maybe got fewer tabs up. So we, yes, we did the islands. Remember? Yep. Their owner unknown. Um, so we did this section. Let's move out a bit. Now we have not done this. Oh yeah, did, is this that weird one, or is that the town one? That's over by. Uh, the school kind of a thing. Um, oh, that could be the ball field. No, this is. No, that's in the wrong place. Yeah, this is a weird. This is, remember, we're in the unknown one. Look at the weird shape of this thing. Yeah. Wow. Okay, let's take a look at the property card. All right, Anna Lee, this is owner unknown. This is map lot 103-1. It's a little more than half of an acre. And it was sold in, it will all, the last time it was sold was 1963 for no money. It was sold by Will Lamour to an unknown person. Oh, so this is, I bet this is up by Keith Road then. And more lumber, because we we do own a little bit uh, along the railroad there. Well, this is um, unknown. This is not owned by the town. Oh. Hmm. So this is right by. Um, maybe it's part of our property there. Maybe it's seven point one. Who's seven one? It's across from Tomosa. I want you to give me the uh, 
property card thing. We did zoom to it. All right, well, it's across from Kip Kamosa. Huh. Who would that be? I thought that was the white house that just got, yeah. that just is getting rehab, but there's no house here. Yeah, I don't know. Um, anyway, so that. That's a pretty big chunk. And, and there's a pile that goes right along the side of the road, which I thought would be actually, isn't you know, the mass dot, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a weird, weird shape. So that might be a trade off to, you know, somebody in number two might want to buy it. Who's that? Gary Kolakowski. Maybe if I hover here. No, nope, hover here. Seven is. Now it's hovering, isn't working. Anyway, onward. So that is a weird weirdo. Yeah. It's kind of useless, so. I mean, it's useless to us, but it might be nice for somebody else. Yeah. You know, to that person who's in the abutting property. Here we go. Here's something interesting. Hey, hey, stop it. Uh, hang on, sorry. This thing is, is too attached to my, there we go, thank you. Well, that could be the land. Oh, no, this is unknown. Hmm. Yeah, this is unknown. No, this one's far away farm. I guess I got to zoom in a little bit more. Oh, it's a weird little triangle. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, unknown. So this is on still water. It's map acre. lot number 92-15 and has one acre. And that looks like it's right where Sand Gully and Stillwater meet. Wow, there's some weird ass property shapes here, huh? Yeah. A Great River huh. Hydro. In Stillwater, and what's seventeen? Is Barway Farm? So maybe Barway would want it, maybe not, but maybe, <laughs> right? Because yeah. that would just let them wrap up that whole lot. Oh, actually, let's look at the property card for a second. So it's one acre, and it was sold by Leon and Edith Kazakowski in 1963. And it has a value of fourteen thousand dollars right now. And I think that hang on, let me check my layers, but I think I got the flood. Oh no, I don't have the let's let's make sure we put the flood map in there because that will also uh yeah. what uh the value would be. So it's not in a flood zone. All right, we'll move on out. And move on out. Okay. <clears throat> so we haven't done down below at all. I think we just have these la these three at the bottom left to do. Let's start in my neighborhood. Bloody brook. Oops. <laughs> Hundred year floodplain. Oh, that's oh yeah, that's the Mill South Mill River. That's not what I'm pointing to though. Oh, look, there's actually two dots there. All right, so. Oh, interesting. Okay. Why is this? That's not the one I want. I want the one next to it. There we go. Owner unknown. That looks like a sizable chunk. Um, 
It's map lot, map lot number 160-4, owner unknown, four acres. Now that is in the uh, recharge, I think it's in the recharge area for the whole Bloody Brook. Where's the Bloody Brook Reservoir? Is that down, is that the? Um, I don't believe it's in there. Okay. but it is landlocked yes it is and i think that um joe tatro or or jay savage might be interested because they're the guys who own these lots like one seven and six and stuff like that oh yeah they and, would be yeah and, four acres sorry what four Start acres four. yeah yeah, yeah. And I believe it's well, the problem with this area is it's very wet because this is my backyard too, <laughs> and it's very wet. But let's see who's three. Realty 1946 Realty. Who the heck is that? What's no who's two? 1946 Realty. Oh, guess what? We got to find out who 1946 Realty is. Cowls. Wow, who's, uh, the a random number. I mean, the random owner in the middle yeah. there. Yeah, and then uh, 24 yeah. is, I know. So these might be woods, you guys. This might be the woods because up here is where it's the fields and then it turns into to woods. So uh, this well, is what's 17, Lily? Look at that. Uh, 17 is the one. Yep, there it is, okay. Yep. Um, it's That's 57 easy. acres and it's and the co by... it's the cocots oh, okay. I, oh no it was sold by henrietta cocot so it's that realty llc yeah, yeah. maybe that 1946 realty is cocots is yeah Okay, because that, that parcel is surrounded by all that 1946 realty, so they might be interested. They in might that. be interested in that. They might not be. I, I don't know. You know, it depends. I don't know. You know, yeah, you're right. It is surrounded by that. So anyway, that's four acres that we got there. Maybe they already think it's theirs because <laughs> maybe it is and we just don't have the info, right? No, right. That. Nothing's coming up. As a company for 1946 Realty. Oh, you, yeah. yeah, you can look for that stuff. Thank you. See, huh? No, I don't, I'm trying at least, but nothing's coming up. All right, so let's look at this. This is right on South Mill River Road, and I know it, that this is woods. Um, it's map lot number 166 14. It is uh, nine tenths of an acre just shy of an acre sale date 12 a.m <laughs> sale price zero um yeah i guess we don't know too much information on that one but you know hey that's almost enough no, but I, yeah well and this is the um these 13 is baronis i think yep and then one i don't who is that you know, either of these two characters might be interested in buying it mm -hmm. um, because um, what's the lot size requirement to build? Two acres. Because these certainly aren't two acres, are they? Well, no, they would have been grandfathered. Oh, okay. Before our zoning. Um, so, so nobody, this is not a buildable lot as it is right now. No, not under our current zoning. Um, the agricultural residential area has to have 200 feet for frontage and um, almost two acres of land. Okay. And it does look like it's registered to the Cocots. Sorry, I'm back on the no, good. 1946 Thank you. Realty. I'm glad you, uh, you oh. dog that. <laughs> Thanks for looking that up. Yeah, it says it's linked to this address through corporate registration records, and it has Henry, Henrietta, and Edith Cocott listed. 
Okay. So it's probably worth talking to them about that parcel. I mean, it could very well because of where it's at. They probably assume it's theirs and they probably don't, you know, they just get taxed for all these lots and they pay for them. But um, so they might be shocked to find out that, that it, it isn't theirs. And so Carolyn, I think, wouldn't the process be like if we were to approach them and they said, oh no, that is ours. And they, you know, had the deeds, then we'd have to do like a back taxes thing, right? Well, yeah. I mean, the assessors would handle it. Um, you know, they would figure out some kind of compromise. I'm sure. But you can't. You can't go back. You can only go back a couple of years. I mean, it, right. you can't. And you can't. Um, you know, assess. Um, you know, uh, interest and all, all that kind of stuff. And it would have to be settled. I mean, it would be a negotiated settlement. I would think, rather than going to court. I mean, you go to court, then it's decided. But. Yeah, um, but it yeah, it would be something that we could decide, you know, settle. So, I mean, wouldn't they be paying for the taxes for them through the LLC? If 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 we have it declared as unknown, oh, they're not I'm paying sorry. Taxes. They yeah, have, they're not paying okay. taxes on it now. If they assume that they own it, then um, you know, there would be a discussion on that. The, the assessor would be able to handle it then if they wanted it, then they would, you know, we would sell it. We have to sell it for an appraisal, appraisal amount or what's on the assessed value. And so the assessed value is what, $14,000. So they would have to pay $14,000 and then they would own it. Yeah. So if they didn't want it, I wonder if they would give access to it for the town to use, no? Well, I, I mean, I don't know enough about unknown properties. You yeah. go to court, you have to, you, the reason why it costs money is because you have to hire a title search by a third party, you know, independent third party. Right. And they do the title search, verifying that it is unknown. And then the town can go through the process of acquiring it. If, if somebody believes it's theirs and yeah. um, we do still have to do the title search. That's why we, um, in our town meeting, we appropriate a little bit every month, every year to, you know, handle some of this property discussion because you, yeah. you have to hire a, you know, a legitimate third party person. Right. Verify, you know, I mean, you could still end up in court fighting it, but. Right. Um, well, it, it does seem to me that it would be a win-win because yeah, we either establish that they do own it and they pay a couple of years back taxes and then they're and it's added to the tax rolls right right um, well the whole purpose you right. know we're not collecting any taxes right. on this so this okay. is why this is a valuable exercise just so we can identify these parcels and say hey right. what's going on let's start collecting some taxes or we can sell them or whatever right um so i think that's a really good idea okay i mean you know this we should, somebody should have done this, but as you can see, it takes a few hours to just mess around, make a list. Yeah. Yep. Right. So here's this parcel here. I think we did talk about this one. That's that triangle. Yes. That, that's right by frontier. We did, didn't we? 158-14. Yeah, I can have that down. Okay. It's seven tenths of an acre. And it is right here. Let us zoom in. So, town of Deerfield, this is the. Um, That's the Bloody Brook Monument. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we then we would. Talk. So it's right across the street, mm -hmm. which would probably be. Um, That has to be between the, um, that little, um, that beautiful little yellow house and the frontier mm -hmm. driveway. Yeah, what is, what's this RW? Is that a right of way? Oh, it must be to 15 because 15, oh, this must, this 15. And Kurt, and this is Icky. 
Hickey's Hickey. So is RW a right of way? What is that? Does anybody know? Yeah, it looks like a right of way. Isn't that wild? But it doesn't seem like it connects with anything. Well, it connects to 15, which is landlocked. Look at this. Because this is a separate parcel, 13. Yeah. Hmm. How the hell do these people get in and out of there? And that, what about 16? Oh, it's um, Ann hmm. Kurt. Ann Kurt. And again, it's Hickey. Interesting. Well, maybe Ann Kurt would be interested in, in this uh, yeah. seven tenths of an acre. What's 13? Rachel Jackson. Hmm. Okay. She might be interested in it too, right? Yeah. Well, it butts her house. Yes. Right. That's what I was thinking. I wonder if we can. The other thing is, though, is that maybe just is that steep land that has like banks down, or I mean, I haven't. Could be. I'm. I'm gonna drive by and see there we go i mean it's just it could be a useless gully right because this is the bloody brook floodplain right that we're looking at yes here. yeah <laughs> so um hubba hubba but seven tenths of an acre to somebody might be and it's not in the floodplain Actually, you're right. It is um, on the edge of the floodplain. Yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, 14 and 15 would be interested in it so they could build their ark there. <laughs> is that a good selling point? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you need a place to build your ark? <laughs> All right. Okay. That'll be my i think we've done all the unknowns i'm not positive hang on I, I think we did i think we have yeah all right so um i will assume the responsibility of taking annalise notes and the spreadsheet of the unknowns and putting in the acreage Mm -hmm. and any like because Annalise taking notes too and we'll stick the notes into each one and um we have a lot more that are town owned or are we done with town owned no we have a lot we have more that are town owned um yeah town owned is confusing yeah look at this lot there's uh 77 yeah so and we've done a bunch of them but um, because we started off by thinking we were looking for places where we would build senior housing. Right. Remember, we said, well, we can't do that. We can't do that. Can't do that. But now we're looking at it a little differently, saying, well, is this a resource that we can bring to the town that can, um, you know, potentially bring money for senior housing or just bring money to the town, period. Right. Right. So it well, is we're, we're talking about incurring expense. So this is a solution. Yep. You know, offsetting the expense. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so it is 741. And what I would like to do is uh, make sure we stop by around 10 of so that we can talk about um, how we're going to wrap this up. And, and I think we still have at least one more meeting of going through this. But um, then how how do we go forward with bringing this information to the town but more importantly to us have we identified sites that would be good for senior housing which i think we have some of those but we should um maybe that's what we can do next meeting is rank the ones that we think for senior would be best for senior housing and the reasons for each ranking but we'll do that in the next meeting yeah, um, I think it would make sense to um, figure out any of the parcels that, I mean, we could talk about it at 10 of, we don't need to talk about it right now, but um, 
I, I do think there is a process. Yeah. So I vote for what we have right now. Let's look at some. So this is clearly going to be the sewer. And this will be the pickle factory probably, right? Mm. Fair Street? No, what's this? That could be a cemetery. Cemetery, yep. yep. This is a cemetery too. We did pop down here. Um, what's this? Oh, we're straying here. <laughs> yeah, we're like getting down into the, like what's, these, these are town owned properties. But that is clearly not. It's weird. It feels like an invasion of privacy when someone's private home pops up <laughs> when that's not what I mean to do, you know? What? Why did that come up as town of Deerfield? No. That is not, I guess we need to drive down a little bit more. What the heck? What is this thing? Isn't that weird? Right, let's take a look at this guy. That's the old dump. What? What is the, is that a brown field? Jeez, I don't know. I never heard of that. <laughs> Pull up the property card on that. Yeah, let's look at that. I wouldn't probably want to dig into it if it's truly the old dump. Is it truly list the old dump, isn't it? It's listed as the old dump. It's less than half. Yeah, it's worth the more than the water property. What is it? It's, it's one something. What is it? One 180, 183-12. It's four tenths of an acre. And look what its value. Whoa! That's what I'm saying. It's worth quite a. What's it worth? Ninety-one thousand, more than ninety-one thousand oh. dollars. How can that be? All right. <laughs> All right. Um. Well, it's I'm right across from industrial. We don't. We don't want to put that on the market unless we know what's going on with that. Yeah. One. Right, that could that could end up with a lawsuit, big time, right? So yeah. it's right oh. next to. <laughs> oh my God! All right, back to family trust is right next door. Um. Well, I let's. Worth I gotta. One. I'll have to look at that parcel. Yeah. Find out what. I mean, when we're talking old dump, that precedes then. <laughs> the one on Lee Road, which is was there when I was there. First. So, so that it, was like 40 years ago, at least. It might be an archaeological dig at this point. I know. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. So what is this? Town of Deerfield, a one-foot strip of land along the brook? Along Blacksmith Brook? One foot strip of land, four tenths of an acre. Right huh. here. <laughs> well, that's kind of interesting too. Yeah. All right. Um, What's what was its number? Or do we care? I don't think we actually care. Do we? Well, why don't we list it because. Um, Okay. Actually, okay. you know, if it if it if we if we gives us frontage on Blacksmith Brook, then we potentially have a, a place to go clean up, you know, access to the river to clean up the brook. I mean, it's not it's not a real how do we even runs dry sometimes. But the idea is that you know potentially we have some ability to access that. Yeah. Maybe that's why it was there. But this is wild. I can't. All right, hang on. I, I, no probably, matter. if it's only one foot, it probably yeah. is too small. It won't even let, let me hover, but it should be here somewhere. 18. Hang on a second. Let's. Lower road. Oh, here it is. All right, off Sunderland Road, town of Deerfield. Maybe I can get the property card now. 
Hang on, Annalie. I think we can get you. Yep. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, is this one we already did? 182-18? No, yeah. So it's 182-18, town of, owned by Town of Deerfield. Address is off Sunderland Road. Off Sunderland Road. Four tenths of an acre. <laughs> Weird. Worth 1900 bucks though. Actually, this is pretty interesting. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Oh, is this another cemetery? Yep, another cemetery. Cemetery. And cemetery. Zoom out. You have two minutes, Lily. Thank you. Well, why don't we do the four that are just like These in a row? Right here? Nope. Nope, these. Oh, yes, the I next four up. Oh, yeah. 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 American Way. So that's your that's England. That's the pickle. That's the pickle. Oxford, Oxford property. And this is that one that we did look at. No. Um, that's a, it's supposed to be the garage behind it, I'm sure. There is that that um, barn on Jewett Avenue that we looked yes. at that we thought might be useful to somebody else, because but you said and I think you said Paul Ellis's house was in front of it. Yes. This. Yes. Yeah. So whoever. Um, someone would be interested in that garage, I think. We we are aware that there is a market of value on that one. Yes. yes. I will say though that well it's uh is it one sixty eight? One one sixty nine dash one eighty six on Jewett Avenue, J E W E T T and it's um point one eight point one nine of an acre. It's tiny. Okay. Yeah, but it has just pretty much has the garage on it. But you know, you can make senior housing right there. Yeah. Not kidding. If we, uh, if we, uh, all right. So we, I think we looked at all these guys, right? Yeah. So where we didn't look on the town properties so much was we beyond beyond the center, like up here. Right, like some of these are going to be sand gully and stuff for the current um, road. But I found this. I did find that like there's this. Uh, yeah, here I was just noodling around. I go, what's Baker Lane for crying out loud? And let's look at this. No, oh, no, not that one. Gurf. I do apologize. It's I have to keep moving my little zoom thing around to get this out of the way. In. So there is a um, like a a building lot. It looks like right here on Baker, and it's a legit par carved out lot owned by the town of Deerfield. Wow. Yeah, and it's yeah. um three eight seven acres. Wait, 0. 0.278? 0.387. Map lot number is 25 dash five. Could you repeat that? Yeah, we're getting a lot of. Yeah. Um, getting a lot of uh, 125 one dash 39. Dash And we'll just go back to looking at it for a second here. Um, let us zoom in. So it looks to be the same so size as other lots, contiguous to it. Yeah. Huh. I'm pretty surprised that the 
we have a lot that's our lot hmm. so again this might be something that uh, people on either side would be interested in buying i drove by it the other day because i was curious and it's a uh, you know it's woods and people especially in a cul-de-sac i'm sure they cherish the forest you know All right. Well, that was fun. I'm going to stop sharing because it is killing my machine. <laughs> All right. So let us take a step back. I think that for the purposes of senior housing, we have walked through the buildings and the parcels that might be of interest to us. I mean, but they're all sort of like it's data all out in our notes and stuff like that. But I think that um, we have enough there to, to create something and a way to evaluate them. So that I'm probably not going to do it this week because what I want to do is get the unknowns into the spreadsheet and maybe start to get some of the town ones into the town spreadsheet too so that we can get a handle on them. Um, but I would suggest that next meeting, we spend half an hour continuing the property searching, and then half an hour focused specifically on the senior housing uh, properties. Let's begin with the properties and then talk about the buildings. And let's consider, I think we should consider the building opportunities sort of separately in a way, but maybe look at sites. So sites versus buildings. Mm -hmm. And just begin, um, this is when I would love to just have a whiteboard and have all of us in a room and just, you know, draw, draw things about like, this is good and this is bad. And because we're in the, the mushy phases. Um, does, how does that sound to you guys? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think, you know what, just, um, it's really good to have discussions, but I think we're going to end up saying, you know, recommending maybe Brayburn and, and pursuing access. And so, um, I think it's really exciting that we're doing this because, you know, money's always an issue, but if we can do land swaps or sell the land and or generate income, then you're able to um, offset the request for, you know, access. And I think, you know, th there's well, a way to solve this. So I, yes, Annalie. Those unknowns, is that one of the things for our next meeting also is what we're going to do with that information? Yeah, I mean, once we've got a list, we've got a list. I, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe we can sell the property up on um, Pine Nook. I, I just, we need to locate our town forest. I'm not sure which parcel is our town forest. And then we could see if there's, if any of the parcels are contiguous. And then therefore, you know, you could put the, pull, pull it together or in, in, entice partners like with Eagle Brook. I know their land is under conservation restriction. So you could do, um, you know, something along as an application to generate income, um, you know, for the carbon sequestration. So, so I think that the, the, probably the thing to do around the, the unknown is to get the list of them yeah. put them together with all the acres. And then do you guys get, does the town office get, interns or anything like that or does do well we could uh, well i mean um the, the public health the department of public health has an intern program what we get in years before when i was on the planning board we used to get interns from umass to do specific projects um the problem with interns is that they need supervision and you have to have a specific um, project that is doable within, you know, a semester. So uh, you, we would have to contact, um, say UMass. Okay. So let's not have to organize something for the fall. 
Yeah. And it would have to be over by December. Because we, have... yeah, so that doesn't make sense. You're right. No. Uh, what I'm thinking is it would be nice if we did all this groundwork um, so that somebody in the town could basically say, um, okay, this makes sense to offer it to these abutters. This makes sense to put it into forestry for sequestration. Um, you know what I mean? So those are all decisions that probably maybe there should be a committee. <laughs> I hate to say another committee, but a committee that is identified to address land use <laughs> in the town um, and, and how to, how to actually. Well, we could probably have, um, you know, maybe Sue Bulat or something in the um, building inspector's office put together potential connections between um, or work with Karen Menard in the assessor's office to, you know, do the connections. I think though, that, but don't you think like you were saying before with the, uh, you know, carbon sequestration opportunity, some part of the town needs to say, this is our goal around this. You know, what well, is we, the goal around I, I mean, I could see passing that off to the energy committee to um, investigate because okay. I, I know I can't even, I can't remember, you know, I, I just remember I went to a meeting and they were talking about either it was West Springfield or Westfield or some one of those towns um, put together, not a very large acreage. And they um, put it on the California um, index and they're, they're making, they have income for their parks. It's offset the operating costs for their parks. And I mean, it doesn't cover everything obviously, but, oh, but you know, they, were, they were trying to um, figure out how to pay for their parks. The and so might be all over this. I know. So I, I mean, I think it's a really, I just, you know, it really impressed me. I was like, wow, this could be really a cool thing to do. Um, and so how should should we, as the senior housing committee, bring it to the energy committee, or do we bring it to the select board and they present it to? How how does it get to them? What's the best way? Probably it should come to the select board and then go to the energy committee. So it doesn't look, you know, because the select board is the overseer. Right. And so we'd say, go investigate the possibility of pulling together, um, you know, a group effort to, you know, do we have enough property to make it worthwhile as the town of Deerfield if we take all these unknowns plus our town forest? If it's not, then let's let's add in. Let's see if we can partner with Eagle Brook, and ask them to work with us so that we can make it attractive enough and have enough income to um, offset some, you know, some cost. Maybe it's only maintenance at the senior center or whatever. I mean, it's since it was all, since it was the idea of the housing committee, then you know we're gonna we're gonna use it for something to off you know we request it to offset the something whatever. But our the people, town, uh, the town would make a decision at some point, either town meeting or when do or you just kind of general fund. When does the select board? Um, well, you probably didn't get a summer schedule last year, but when do you typically move into your summer schedule? Um, well, we, we've, because we were having so many meetings, we are officially every other week anyway, right now. And then we just meet in between when, whenever. So um, I, our next meeting, we just, we just had a meeting um, last night. So um, it's two weeks from now. If you're coming to planning board next week too. Yeah. I mean, well, we have, like I said, we have multiple meetings all the time, but um so like June 2nd is a Wednesday. Is that, are you guys, because you meet all the time, is Wednesday your normal meeting time? Yes, every other Wednesday is our normal official meeting time. So why don't we see about getting on your agenda for June 2nd and then that gives us a deadline to have the unknowns, we'll definitely have the unknowns done because I'm hoping I can yeah. pretty much have that done for us to just walk through really fast next week. Um, but the the town of Deerfield ones, um, we can have them done by then because then that way we can just say, here's the ones, here's the land that the town owns that we found all over the place. 
is the land that the town probably owns because we don't know who the owners are. Right. Well, there's going to be a little bit of a cost to, and so we we determine we would determine who what what ones would be worth pursuing. Absolutely. I mean, that yeah. random strip along five and ten, you know, is probably useless. So would we invest any money to then try to get rid of it? No, probably not. So what we would do is we would want to recommend the ones that look like they have some, uh, you know, value to somebody or us. And then what we would do would be to figure out some kind of game plan. Right. Although, don't you think that, you know, like that weird strip on, on five and 10 or that strange triangle on North Main, um, if that, we, has, that has value. Yeah. It, if we were to say, um, look, if we will, we will pay to resolve the title because it, the town needs to do, that's the town's responsibility. And we will sell it to you for the price of resolving the title. So it's a wash for the town. And then the town starts collecting taxes on it. So basically, yep. that, and, that mean, makes very, and that makes very much sense. Yeah. Because uh, what you're trying to do is figure out how to, how to increase our, you know, the value of the property on the tax rolls. Exactly. Also, recurring revenue, recurring right. revenue. <laughs> right. So anyway, that's a, a way to think about it. So um, we will shoot to have a meeting with the select board on the second to talk to them about properties. Um, and I would think maybe by then we would have an idea of the sites and properties that make the most sense to us to pursue. The question is, do we then go to the select board to say, um, and this maybe it's two different meetings because that'd be a lot of meeting, um, to say, um, just for instance, we've identified these two properties if we want to do a very small um, senior housing to start we've identified these two properties if it, we want to do a larger one and i think we need to have numbers around those like if we want to build eight units we want to build 30 units whatever we come up with at some point we're going to be coming up with things like that and um, the question I have is where, and we could certainly make a recommendation based on, on what we know and what we've learned, where is that decision made about which avenue to pursue? Well, hopefully it would be there would be a decision that was fairly, you know, straightforward. I mean, there would be like a higher priority decision and that, and then we would go forward. If it involves money, then we would have to go to the town meeting. But um, you have to start with authorization if you're gonna spend any money. So we would have to go to town meeting. Yeah. But laying out the argument of what, route to take is is the select board's decision okay. um, so we should present we the could start right we would make a decision to move forward if it make, something makes sense we would make make a decision to move forward if something sounds like yes it's worth pursuing going to town meeting and obviously we've missed this town meeting because our town meeting is in june we're not but anyway we're, yeah but we're we're planning on a town meeting in the we you know just in general in the last few years because the budgets have been so you know delayed or you know uh, funding hasn't been settled by the time we go to town meeting um we usually have a special town meeting once um our money is certified free cash is certified in the fall it has been it has been, except for this past pandemic year, we've been able to certify cash um, by the end of September. So it looks like, you know, if we have a special town meeting, it's generally sometime in October, you know, the first couple of weeks 
to the end of October. Um, if we have a, a especially something controversial or something that um, is more complicated, then it spills over into November, the first week or two in November. After that, we just don't do it. Okay. So I would, I would say there's a six week period, the month of October and the two weeks of November that we would have, you know, uh, zoning that might be needed to be fixed, um, budget issues that not, might need to be fixed and something like this, a special project. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't wanna put an RFP out for a partner, a private partner until we knew we had a game plan. Oh. So once you had your town meeting and you have either a parcel or a game plan to move forward, then you would have, and you get an okay from a town meeting, then what you would do is put an RFP or you know um, some, something out for a, you would have to look, I mean, there's a couple, when we thought we were gonna have to buy, or I thought we were gonna have to buy the Channing Beat building because the only consistent purchaser um, was the Chinese Immersion School. And that was gonna bankrupt us anyway. And so we'd end up paying operating costs as well as um, you know, yeah. the mortgage and all that kind of stuff. It made sense that we were gonna go out and do that. So we reached out to a couple of different people and there was one particular person that contractor that had a pretty good reputation. And so we had started working with them potentially to have, you know, assisted living senior center, um, you know, a, affordable housing built on the Channing Beat parcel. So it's just that it was such a mammoth undertaking. Um, and then with the sewer on top of that, you know, our, we went from almost no debt load to almost going to our debt ceiling. So, you know, it was just really, I'm so, you know, it was such a relief that Treehouse came in because, you know, and then the, but the pandemic was happening anyway, and it was like sucking out all our energy and. Well, so what, the, one of the things that I wanted to find out about Deborah, if she got to go, did you get to go to that abandoned um, I did watch that last night, yes. Um, and I know they'll send a video. They usually each, because I signed up for, I think, most of those. And so I've gotten the videos for them. Um, and there was a lot of information. I had people talking in the background at my house. I don't know if you've been hearing the chirping downstairs. I don't know. They've been making me nervous and I couldn't mute. We're, we have chickens that are hatching or chicks. Oh, so they've, okay. they're all downstairs chirping in the basement. So last night I tried muting, whatever, I don't know. But so one of the main, a couple of things that I got out of it was just that it takes a long time and you just have to be diligent. Um, okay, well, but if it was things that we were doing like searching buildings and stuff like that which i thought was interesting so the overall thing was interesting and i apologize i didn't take notes only because i knew i was counting on the video coming back and i wanted to re-look at certain things that i might have missed sure. but i thought um and people were asking questions like could a town um be first right of refusal so that a uh, investor can't come and take it. So then it stays in the town for properties. That was one thing. Um, and then people were talking about have, and I didn't see an answer for it, if communities were able to do it more so than the town, but like maybe a few people able to conger up and put something together for housing um they're already looking at the farin which i don't even know if that's completely empty yet but um somebody's already got their eye on that they were talking about but they um and they had different towns if i remember correctly and there was one of i think one town had like 200 units that they pulled together wow that's really um, it was great. you know a collaboration of different buildings Wow. But the overall, they had, I think it was 222 units. So I thought that was impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
Well, I think one of the things that I've learned in attending some of these meetings is that there are groups out there that know how to do stuff in a lot of different ways and that this is a great organization that to tap into and um, when it comes time to partner. In other words, I think right. that um, since we pay for the FERCOG and all that kind of stuff, it makes the most sense to begin with them and they are very active now in in housing and i think everybody's actually really waking up to the the need for mm -hmm. subsidized housing at least this group right <laughs> well I, I i mean for affordable housing not market value housing but affordable housing is really it is very difficult and i i don't know how people do it you just never get out i mean no. you, you have to have some kind of help at some point right well these you know, you're like starting the community, out the community land trust um thing that i went to um sounds like a really cool way to do subsidized housing and keep it affordable and they cap it the value so it's not that the housing is an investment as it has become you know people think of housing as a as a way as like part of their retirement in a lot of ways right but this is not that this is housing as housing <laughs> and shelter housing as a right is the way they look at it. There was 80 people there. 80 wow. people attended. It was 77, but 80. Wow. I thought that was a good number. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. So there's, I think that um, once we figure out what, what we want to do and where we want to do it, then we can go find the partners because I do know that, CPC is going to town meeting with a request to put a significant contribution specifically into senior housing beyond the mandated 10% that's been going in every year. And that should bring the CPC monies up to uh, about half a million. So if we can go to a partner with a half a million dollars. Yeah, but Lily, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even feel restricted with that because you know the big pot is available too i mean i've always pot has been wiped out by the park well not entirely but really pretty much <laughs> i know but we're you know we get we get almost three don't we get almost three hundred thousand a year back in so um yes it obviously it depends and you know that as well. Yeah. That's the expectation for this year. Yeah, that's the expectation. And, um, but you know, your mandatory distributions to the different areas and the park is um, taking up a, a big amount. So there's, but, but at any rate, my point being that, I mean, if you go to a partner and you've got more than half a million dollars, but you're also walking in with the land, I think, yes that that's a great place to start a conversation. And I think that we can get help from in the way that Sunderland did was they pulled together like different um, pioneer, they did RDI and Pioneer Valley, somebody or other is running it and kind of a thing that, you know, we, we can look at what Sunderland did and find out what they like about it, what they don't like about it, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But we got to do this other stuff first. Deb, if you get the link um, for the PowerPoint, can you send it to us? Oh, definitely, yep. Yeah. That would be great. Thank you, Deborah. Yes, yeah, it sounds very interesting. I, I, I thought it was excellent, sounding excellent. Uh, if I hadn't had a selectman's meeting last night, I would go because it was all local. I mean, yep. there, there's a huge difference between what happens in the eastern part of the state with um, towns and cities that have, you know, different demographic profiles that are eligible for different things. Plus, they have staff that that's all the staff does is work on this stuff. When yep. you are out here, we have no resources and we are all just a volunteer, per, you know, right. committee. And so uh, that's why I was really excited to see it because it was like, wow, this is, people are doing it locally, you know? So it was good. I mean, it's yeah, I think they were doing a pretty good job too. I mean, 222 units, I thought was impressive. You don't remember what town that was? I'm thinking Montague. Wow. So I might be I wrong, but done a lot. I know no. Montague spoke. They were one of the towns that spoke and I'm thinking it, but like I said, there was a lot of information and then people were 
typing questions. So I was reading those and I was just trying to soak it all in. And I'm like, yep, I definitely need the video to retrace and catch up. So no, Montague's done an awful lot of work in housing over the years. They've been also the primary um, benefactor of, of the housing authority too. Right. So, um, yeah, no, that I'm, I'm sure they were, Athol's done some work too. Oh, they, and, I think they were on it too. And I yeah. might have them confused. So, well, both of them are good examples, yep. um, of successfully doing, um, right. And I know, think once housing. the video comes, it will help us with some ideas. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much for doing that. I'm, yeah, yeah, that's really nice. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. So I think that, um, for next week, we will do half of our time pursuing, continuing to pursue the town um, mystery lands. And um, I will have, before then, I will have updated the unknowns with the acreage from Annalise Minutes. And um, I will look at Annalise Minutes to remember what else to put on the agenda. <laughs> that there thank you <laughs> all right uh it's 8 18 does anybody have anything else they want to um no just thank you for you know this is really it's actually less, so less stressful that we're doing this all you know as a working yeah. meeting yeah a meeting more regular than having to do this outside the meeting and then bringing it to the meeting so that's what's probably great yeah, hopefully that's fun too. I get to see you guys. <laughs> well, and I think it helps to keep it to one hour. Um, and hopefully come the summer, we can make it every other week instead. But we'll see. We we got to do what we got to do, right? Well, this is, yeah, but we're getting momentum. So that's really good. Yeah. And I think it'll feel, I think it'll feel really nice for senior housing to bring this information to the select board and to show that um we're not just takers we're givers <laughs> yeah no but i mean you know the problem is there's just not enough money and you know when you come and you're begging for money or whatever you know everybody's whining for money there's it's it's when i say it's whining i don't mean it negatively it's just that everybody needs right. money so by coming and saying this is what we need to do but coming with some sort of solution Right. or some sort of help um, so that you we can move forward a little bit mm -hmm. um, makes a big difference. So always, I've always taught my, my folks who work with me that when you find a problem, bring me a couple of solutions with it and we'll figure it out. <laughs> and that's yes. always a lot better way to do it. <laughs> Well, it just, you know, I mean, there are so many things and, and if, if you, there are possibilities of solutions and it's at least, it's going to at least make us investigate it. Right. So it is helpful. Um, just identifying the problem is just, you know, get in line. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's true. I know. I know it sounds so terrible, but I mean, I'm just saying there's so many things, you know, and. I mean, we ha we have just since last week we have you know a million and a half at least on River Road and McCollum Farm Road damage. So, I mean, it's just so when you come in and you say, oh, you know, we need you know another million or so for housing, it's like, well, sorry, we got to fix the roads first. So I know. Well, hopefully uh, Biden will cover the roads. I know. I know. I'm hoping. There's open. All right, everybody. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I make the motion. <laughs> I, se I second. Um, all those in favor, let's do a roll call. Deborah? I uh, yes. Ellie? Yes. Yeah. Alex, you don't get to vote. I'm pointing to my squares here. Uh, Carolyn? Yes. I really say yes. The meeting is adjourned and we will oh well we meet again we meet again next week same bat time same bat channel and I'll send out the agenda. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks.